Hey y'all, so today we're gonna work on dividing polynomials. So that means we're gonna be dividing with variables and things like x squared plus two x minus nine and x plus five, we're gonna be dividing with those kind of problems. And we're going to use the box method to divide. So we're going to use the box method to divide because it is the most efficient way to divide with polynomials. But before we get to that, we're going to review how to multiply using the box method. So I know a lot of you don't use the box method to multiply, but I want to make sure you understand it in order to understand the dividing. So to do that, we're going to multiply 2x minus 1 times 4x plus 3. To multiply 2x minus 1 times 4x plus 3, I write the 2x minus 1 on the left. So that means my box has two rows, one row for 2x, one row for minus 1. I write the 4x plus 3 on the top, one column for 4x, one column for plus 3. And then I multiply. 4x times 2x is 8x squared. Remember, x times x is x squared. 4x times negative 1 is negative 4x. 3 times 2x is 6x. And 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. What do you notice about your diagonals in this box? What do you notice about negative 4x and 6x? They are like terms, and I get 2x. When I write my answer, I have to write it in standard form. So the 8x squared has to go first, and then the minus 3 last. So when you multiply using the box, I put the first thing on the left, second thing on the top. doesn't really matter when you're multiplying with the order, but... If there's two things, you put two rows, two things, two columns, okay? And then you just multiply to fill in the box. We're gonna be using some of that idea in our dividing. But before we get to it, there's a couple of important notes. First is that the polynomials must be in standard form. So polynomials must be written in standard form. Standard form means written in order from the biggest exponent down to the lowest. So like x squared, then x, and then the constant. So things like x cubed, x squared, x constant. It has to go from highest exponent to lowest. It can't just jump around. It's got to be written in order, standard form. And that's for both what's being divided and what you're dividing by. Both things have to be written in standard form. You also have to put zeros in for any missing terms. So if the problem jumps from x cubed to x, you have to put in a zero x squared. So any term that's missing, you have to put that zero in place. That's important to remember. I'm gonna use some different colored pens to do these problems. You might wanna do the same, it's up to you. My advice is watch the first example, listen. Don't try to watch and learn it and do it all at the same time watch, listen, and I think that'll go better. Okay, so example one, I just screwed it up. I just tried to write the wrong problem. Example one is 3x cubed plus 17x squared plus 9x minus 5 divided by x plus 5. So 3x cubed plus 17x squared plus 9x minus 5 divided by x plus 5. So for some vocabulary, this thing that we're dividing, that's the dividend. The thing we're dividing by is the divisor. So dividend divided by divisor. The divisor, x plus five, goes over here on the left. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw my box. Don't stress about the size of your box. The more examples you do, the better you'll get at judging how big to make it. If you make it too big and you have empty spots, it's fine. If you draw it too small and have to add on to the end, it's fine. It doesn't matter either way. So I drew my box. My divisor goes over here on the left, the x and the plus 5. This 3x cubed, the 3x cubed for my dividend, goes in the very first spot of my box. I just write it down, 3x cubed. 
I don't have to do any work to figure out that spot. I just automatically know it. It's that 3x cubed. Then I have to ask myself what, so up there in that box I just drew, what times x gives me that 3x cubed? What times x is 3x cubed? That x has a 1 in front of it, so what times 1 is 3? 3. What times x is x cubed? x squared, so that's a 3x squared. Now I take that 3x squared and I multiply it by the 5. 3x squared times 5 is 15x squared. Now I'm gonna take my 15x squared and this diagonal that's empty. Those two things have to add up to that 17x squared. So 15x squared plus whatever I put there has to add up to 17x squared. 15x squared plus what is 17x squared? So if I'm at 15 and I need to get to 17, that means I need two more, so 2x squared, positive 2x squared. Then I ask myself, what goes in that purple box up there? What times x gives me 2x squared? What times one is two? Two. What times x is x squared? x, so 2x. Then I multiply 2x times five is 10x. And I repeat the process. I circle my diagonals. 10x and that empty space has to add up to 9x. So 10x and what makes 9x? So if I'm at 10 and I need to get to 9, that means I have to subtract 1x. So minus 1x or negative 1x. Then I figure out what times x is negative 1x. So what times x is negative 1x? Negative 1. Negative 1 times 5 is negative 5 and I repeat the process. Negative five times what? Oops, nope, I just said that wrong. Negative five and whatever I put over here has to add up to this negative five. As soon as I wrote a constant up here, this next column out here is the remainder. So negative five and that remainder have to add up to negative five. So what is my remainder? Negative five and what adds up to negative five? Zero. So my remainder is zero. That R stands for remainder. And you put that re R there as soon as you write a constant up here at the top. As soon as we wrote a plain old number with no variable, next column is remainder. Your answer, so all the work is done. Your answer is the stuff that we wrote on top. 3x squared plus 2x minus one. That is our answer. Our remainder was zero, so we don't have to do anything with it. When the remainder is zero, so R, that R is the remainder. When the remainder is zero, it means the divisor is a factor of the dividend. Oops, Let's see if I can squish it in there, dividend. So because our remainder is zero, it means that x plus five was a factor of that three x cubed plus 17 x squared plus nine x minus five. So what I want you to do is rewind the video and try to write this down as I talked you through it. And we're gonna go through some more examples. So if you're kind of confused, you're gonna get it, keep working at it. So let's look at example two. Example two is 7x squared plus 2x cubed plus 2x plus 9 divided by 2x plus 3. So as I was saying that problem, 7x squared plus 2x cubed, that sounds funny. Is that okay to have it like that? No, that is not in standard form. So the first thing I need to do before I work anything out, before I even draw my box, I'm gonna fix this. I'm gonna write it in the correct order. 2x cubed plus 7x squared plus 2x plus nine. Is my divisor, my 2x plus three okay? Yeah, I can leave that the way it is. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw my box, 2x and plus three.
Remember, don't stress about how big to draw the box, just draw it. And if you need to add more at the end, add more at the end. If you need, if you have some blanks, then you have some blanks, not a big deal. My very first thing in my dividend, that 2x cubed goes in my very first box. Then I figure out what Sorry, having a little bit of technical issues here. Okay, sorry. Having a lot of technical issues, evidently. Okay, so what times 2x is 2x cubed? What times 2x is 2x cubed? What times 2 is 2? 1. What times x is x cubed? x squared. So that's a 1x squared. Okay. Then I take that 1x squared and I multiply by 3. What is 1x squared times 3? 3x squared. That 1 I put up there in front of the x squared, you don't have to put it. That is up to you. You can either put it or don't put it. Sometimes it helps to put it in there and then not write it in your answer. 3x squared and whatever goes in that blank has to add up to 7x squared. So 3x squared plus what? is 7x squared. If I'm at 3 and I need to get to 7, that means I need 4x squared. Then I ask myself, what times 2x is 4x squared? What times 2x is 4x squared? 2x, because 2 times 2 is 4, x times x is x squared. Then I take 2x times 3. 2x times 3 is 6x. Then I circle my diagonals, 6x and whatever goes in that blank has to add up to 2x. So if I'm at 6x and I need to get to 2x, if I'm at 6 and I need to get to 2, that means I have to subtract 4x. Then I ask myself, what times 2x is negative 4x? So what times two is negative four, negative two? And there's no x up there because if you did put an x, x times x would be x squared, and we don't want an x squared, we just want an x. Negative two times three is negative six. So as soon as I wrote a constant up there, that negative two, my next column is the remainder. So negative six and whatever I put in my remainder spot has to add up to nine. So if I'm at negative six and I need nine, how do I get from negative six to nine? I have to add 15. So this one's gonna be a little bit different when we write our answer. Your answer is still gonna be the stuff at the top, the x squared plus two x minus two. Now this remainder, I put plus and I write my remainder over my 2x plus 3 over my divisor. That's my final answer. So my answer is x squared plus 2x minus 2 plus 15 over 2x plus 3. The only part that's a fraction, the only part that's anywhere near that fraction bar is the remainder, that 15 over the 2x plus 3. So our remainder was 15. Is 2x plus 3 a factor? So that's our next question. Is 2x plus 3 a factor? If we did the dividing and we got a remainder of 15, that means it is not a factor because the only way it can be a factor is if the remainder is zero. So when you're asked, is it a factor or not, you have to do the dividing. And once you do the dividing, if the remainder is zero, then yes, it's a factor. If the remainder is anything other than zero, it is no, not a factor. So what I want you to do now is pause the video and I want you to work out these three problems. So I want you to copy and work these three problems out and then come back, check your answers. And if you're right, good, go on to the assignment. If you're not, then watch the problems that you need to watch. If you get number three right, then don't watch number three. If you get number three wrong, watch number three and so on. Okay, so pause the video, write down those three problems and work them out. I know this is difficult. Ms. Rothermel and I both know this is not the easiest topic. So we really want you to try it and really want you to put in the effort. So take a minute, try these three problems on your own, okay? 
So if you haven't paused the video, pause the video. So hopefully you did that. These are your three answers. So you worked them out, check them, make sure that they are the right answers. If they're not, keep watching the video and I'm gonna work out all three of them so you can see them. So number three, negative two x squared plus x cubed minus four divided by negative three plus x. So as I was writing that, I thought it sounded funny and it is funny sounding because it's not in standard form. So I need to rewrite this as x cubed minus two x squared. Then it jumps to negative four. Well, that's not okay. I have to put in zero x then minus four. My divisor, negative three plus x, that's not okay either. I need to write that as x minus three. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw my box. And I'm gonna fill in my x cubed because that first spot is the easiest part to fill in. It's always gonna be whatever the first term is of your dividend. Then I ask myself, what times x is x cubed? What times x is x cubed? x squared, because one times one is one, x squared times x is x cubed. Then I multiply x squared times negative three is negative three x squared. Then I circle my diagonals, negative three x squared, and what? adds up to negative two x squared. If I'm at negative three and I need to get to negative two, that means I add one x squared. Then what times x is one x squared? One x. One x times negative three is negative three x. Then I circle, negative three x and what? Adds up to zero x. So negative three x plus what is zero x? If I'm at negative three x and I need to get to zero x, that means I need positive three x. X times what is three x? X times three is three x. So I put a three up there. Three times negative three is negative nine. As soon as I wrote that positive three up there, that's my constant. This next column is my remainder. So negative nine and whatever I put out there have to add up to negative four. So if I'm at negative nine and I need to get to negative four, that means I add five. So all my work is done. All my diagonals are circled so that they add up to my dividend. So my answer is x squared plus x, and I just chose not to put that one in front of it. If you wanna put the one, you can, it doesn't matter. Plus three, plus I take my remainder of five and I put it over my x minus three. Remember, the only part that comes anywhere near that fraction is that remainder. So the remainder goes over the x minus three. So let's look at number four. So number four was four x cubed minus two x squared minus three divided by two x squared minus one. So as I was writing that, I thought it looked funny and it does because it jumps from x squared to a constant and that's not okay. So I have to rewrite that as four x cubed minus two x squared plus zero x minus three divided by, is this two x squared minus one okay? No, I have to put in a zero there as well. So two x squared plus zero x minus one. Now when I draw my box this time, it's not gonna have two rows, it's gonna have three. So two x squared, zero x minus one. I was about to draw my box in the wrong place. First term that four x cubed goes in the first spot. And you ask yourself, what times two x squared is four x cubed? So what times two is four? Two. What times x squared is x cubed? X, so two x. 
Then I multiply 2x times 0x is 0x squared. It's important that you put the x squared there so that you can keep all your like terms in the right spots. 2x times negative 1 is negative 2x. Now I'm going to circle my diagonal. 0x squared and whatever I put there has to add up to negative 2x squared. So 0x squared plus what is negative 2x squared? Negative 2x squared. 2x squared, what times 2x squared is negative 2x squared? What times 2x squared is negative 2x squared? Negative 1. Then I take that negative 1 and multiply. Negative 1 times 0x is 0x. Again, it's important we put the x there so that everything lines up. Then negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. As soon as I wrote my, positive, my negative 1 up there, my constant, this next column is going to be the remainder. So when I circle my diagonals, for the x's, you're circling all of them. It's important that you remember all of them. Negative 2x, 0x, and that blank has to add up to 0x. So negative 2x plus 0x plus what is 0x, positive 2x. Now I'm not done because I've got this random 1 hanging out down here. So 1 and whatever I put over there has to add up to negative 3. So 1 plus what is negative 3? Negative 4. So my answer this time is that 2x minus 1 plus my remainder of 2x minus 4 over what I was dividing by. So when I write the 2x squared minus 1, I just don't put the 0 there. You don't need it when you write your final answer. In the problem, you needed it. In the answer, you don't. Make sure all of your diagonals are circled. So I knew I wasn't done because I hadn't circled that one yet. Everything ends up circled except for that original term up there. Number five. So number five. I switched letters on you and gave you m squared minus 7m minus 11. Does it matter that I put m's instead of x's? Nope, doesn't matter the letter, doesn't matter the variable, it's all the same. So m and minus 8. So I'm going to try to draw my box a little bit smaller this time, take up a little bit less room. If you write giant like I do, it's okay. You'll just use a lot more paper, and it's okay. You probably do all the time anyway. My m squared goes in that first spot. M times what is M squared? So what times M is M squared? What times M is M squared? M. M times negative 8 is negative 8M. Then I circle my diagonals. Negative 8M and that diagonal have to add up to negative 7M. If I'm at negative 8M and I need negative 7M, that means I need to add 1M. What times M is positive 1M? Positive 1. 1 times M is 1M. And then I do 1 times negative 8. 1 times negative 8 is negative 8. As soon as I wrote that constant at the top, the next column is my remainder. Negative 8 and that remainder have to add up to negative 11. If you're at negative 8 and you need negative 11, that means you need negative 3. So I'm going to write my answer this time as m plus 1 minus 3 over m minus 8. So notice my fraction is only the remainder over what I was dividing by. You could also write this as m plus 1 plus negative 3 over m minus 8. They're the exact same thing. Either or. If you need more help, if you have questions, both Rothermel and I, Ms. Sherman, have Google Voice numbers. Call us, text us, email us, ask Google Classroom questions. We want to help you figure this out. We know it's not easy. Let us help you. Watch the video again. If you didn't get it all written down, rewatch it. Listen to it more than once. And I promise you, the more you do it, the more it will help.